Hi, I'm Jack Berry and I'm at the West Michigan Golf Show and the most colorful bunch in this whole show is from Maple Hill Golf and they are brightening the winter day and here they all are. Look at that. What an array. I mean, have you ever have you ever seen John <laughs> John, De John Daly is having a fit that he can't this get all this. Hi, I'm Jack Berry. I am at the 25th West Michigan Golf Show, and the lady in charge of the works is Carolyn Alt. <laughs> well, we're so glad to be here, and it's hard to imagine that it's been 25 years. I've been privileged to be a part of it for 13 years, and it, I remember the very first one that I did. I actually remember several years before that, the first show I ever went to when Terry was in charge and had my very first golf lesson. So there's a lot of history uh, at this show, and it's been a thrill to be a part of it and to get to be so close to the golf industry. It's, it's such a great industry. Well, and as Terry Moore, a local Grand Rapids fellow, University of Michigan alum, Go Blue. <laughs> who uh, started the golf show on a, on a nice icy night, something like that, right. 25 years ago. Yeah, 1989 at the appropriately named Cascade Ice Arena because on that Saturday, I put on a golf show and a hockey game broke out in the parking lot. It, everything was canceled. It was like uh, be out like East right now. And I still remember the, the radio guy of the day was uh, Bruce Grant from Wood. He was on air canceling everything in sight. I purposely found the line up where the studio line called Bruce and says, hey Bruce, Terry Moore, could you tell people that the golf show will still be on the day? I mean, this was my first effort in private, private uh, golf show them. So that was quite a start, but we made it. But I also want to thank Carolyn. She's been a great partner uh, for me to still be involved with the show. Uh, she's an ideal person that does the show. She's taken it to another level after I did the show 13 years. Well, Car wait, wait, a minute. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Carolyn got us in this beautiful right. big <laughs> building, right? <laughs> right? Well, you know, I think ever since the first time we started talking to Terry, it, it was such a great show to begin with. And again, you know, this community and what golf means to this community. And I think we were all ready to work together to take it to the next level. And we couldn't have done what we did without Terry's support and his participation and everybody knows Terry. I walked down the aisles here, we were walking over here, more people still know him than know me, all the exhibitors are saying hi to him and that's, it's really special to have him still involved but it's been fun. It was fun to move it into the Grand Center and uh, and bring all the golfers out there and we started our par 3 challenge out there in the old Welsh Auditorium, some of the best par 3's when we were in the Welsh Auditorium and then, you know, the city He's been great to us, and we have DeVos Place, and um, you know it's been fun. It's fun to talk to people who say, "Oh, I haven't been to the golf show in a long time. I remember when it was back at the, you know, you have to sort of figure out exactly how long it's been since they've been to the show." But um, it's it's a privilege to be able to keep doing this show, and you know, in the middle of summer when everyone's out golfing and we're in the office working and we think, hi, hey, you know, this is hard work. And then, you know, Friday night we open and everyone's here and the energy's so strong and uh, people have a great time. And it's fun, uh, it's fun to do it and we're looking forward to another 25 years, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is, this is a wonderful, wonderful building. And I'm from the other side of the state and uh, nobody uh, get, gets uh, golf publicity on the east side of the state the way Terry Moore gets it on the west side of the state. Well, one thing I'll say about Jack, you always were nice saying that, but I always said we were always kind of like the big fish in a little pond. We're not competing with the Red Wings or the Pistons, uh, Michigan basketball. So we made the golf show uh, kind of special for one weekend. And I also want to say what's great about Showspan, they also have the clout and the expertise in terms of their marketing. You know, I just did one show. I never went to college to start a golf show. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden I'm start majoring it, you know, <laughs> being a Michigan golfer and working with Art McCafferty and whatnot. But we, we didn't necessarily want to be the biggest show, but we really wanted to be one of the best. We really tried to do things from what the exhibitor wanted and what the... Uh, what the patron wanted, and Carolyn and Mike Wilbraham and all the Showspan staff, they know how to put on shows, but they also
also know how to really listen to the customer. And you know, even the par three, I would have loved to have done that. I didn't have any space. Yeah. These people not only think about these things, they know how to execute it. That's one of the best par threes I think any golf show yeah. does anywhere. Right. And I know a couple of people have duplicated. So compliments to the show span and what they've done, their expertise, because they do this. I mean, this is their full-time business. Well, we we work hard with um, you know we we work hard with the exhibitors. We take surveys every year. We talk to them every year, and you know sometimes the show works better for them, and and years things struggle, and we you know we want to know what is it that is isn't working for you. How can we make things better? The local courses are feeling like we need to really encourage. You know the show has always been about great destinations and book your trips and get your equipment, and the local courses say you know we want to make sure that people also. Know no, it's just about where to play on Saturday. So we talk to them about that. We, we figure out how we can make sure that the message is just about playing more golf, playing more golf, and playing more golf, whether you're whether you're new to it, whether you're a junior, whether you're a family, you know, and, and that's been fun to, uh, like the, with the new first tee of West Michigan and working with Tyler, that's been, you know, he's so appreciative of what we're doing, but we're so appreciative to have him here in town for what he's doing for the game of golf and what he's able to bring to the golf show and add that strong junior element. And so we're always out there looking for those relationships. Who can we bring in to help make the show better? Because we can't do it, but we need everybody like Art, like you, to be able to say, hey, what these guys in West Michigan are doing is good and I'm willing to come down there and help them out and support it. Well, you're doing that. that I like that West, the first tee down yeah. there, the putting contest. <laughs> you know, also I want to say the little story and a little preview for a column I wrote for Art about, you know, the surveys that we used to take and Carolyn Showspan continues to do that and they've done that for all their shows because you really got to listen to what your exhibitors are saying and also the patrons. So we'd take these surveys out. I don't know when you do it, Carolyn, but we used to take them out on Sunday night to dinner and we'd, we'd read about them and we'd get a lot of nice remarks and, you know, we had rated what not because I'm back from an educator standpoint so we'd have this short evaluation system but I always remember a couple things one of the people said you know I noticed that the show traffic kind of died the last half hour of the show we say yeah it, yeah I don't think somebody's gonna come to a golf show for a half hour it's gonna naturally die that was one the other one we loved was you know suggestions for improvements the person said get Tagger Woods here. <laughs> oh, sure. And we will sell the show to IMG in Cleveland, <laughs> along with this show and other, because that's the only way we're going to get Tagger Woods here. But it was so great to see these comments, you know. <laughs> you know and it, but, you know, you got to listen to it, but we've also got a lot of good stuff, though, about how, you know, even things about how many times we would interrupt the show for announcements. We were doing it too often. You know one show, Jack and Novi, that had a constant patter, and uh, we learned from that. And uh, we also learned, you know, that if we're going to have interactive things, uh, you, you know, you got to take care of them. You got to monitor. You got to have a good sound system yeah. too. <laughs> oh wow! Right. Yeah, we do. Uh, we we work hard on the seminar, the sound system for the seminar stage here more than some of the other shows, just because you know we bring in high caliber speakers, and you want to you want to represent. You want them to feel comfortable, and the word gets around. They're willing to come back and work with you because because Terry does such a great job getting them PR and getting them you know out on TV, which is good for them. But they also just feel well taken care of. They they know that it's a class act, and they're going to come out here and they're going to see you know also be respected by the audience, you know, that the that the crowd that comes to hear them really appreciates them and stops and listens. Well, now over 25 years, certainly the two of you must have a couple of good memories. Carolyn, how about you? Okay, well, the first memory I have is of the very first year that we took over the show back in the Grand Center. And I don't know how many people remember the Grand Center was two stories and the golf show was downstairs, which meant they bought their ticket upstairs and they had to take an escalator to come downstairs. Well, before we opened, the crowd for the golf show, they line up early and all of a sudden we had near catastrophe on the escalator because they were all backed up going up the escalator with this. That was the first time that had ever happened because we didn't know how big the crowd was the golf show we had to rearrange everything the next year but first we had to shut the escalator off rescue everybody off the escalator we hadn't even opened the first show yet that's how we so you started with an ice storm we started with an escalator catastrophe but that was my first memory and then uh, we were just talking that um, about Jim Flick and what a treasure that was to have the opportunity to get to know him yes. I mean that was um, when we lost when we all lost Jim earlier this fall um, 
It was such a shame. It was so hard for everybody. But I felt so privileged to, I mean, and this is just honestly, to have worked with folks that like Boyne, who years ago said, we'll help you bring Jim to the yeah. show, and to have their support. And for Jim, he was such a gentleman. He wouldn't even sign an agreement. He, I called him, Jim, you have wow. to sign <laughs> the paper so I know you're coming. And he said, Carolyn, I will not sign the paper. You have my word. And that was it. I never got him to sign the agreement. And of course he came. He showed up on Friday night. He wasn't scheduled to be doing anything until Saturday. He shows up on Friday night, he comes in, and, and we're ready to just, you know, escort him to the hotel, have a nice evening. He says, no, 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 no. I'm, I want to see the show. I want to. So he, so uh, Brian O'Neill took him over to the hitting nets where Boyne was sponsoring the free lessons. And within about 35 seconds, Jim was in there, stepped in there, helped some young man with a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, this. I'd love to know who that was, and that's who yeah. we should be interviewing. Yeah. To, you know, the opportunity to have Jim Flick walk up and yeah. say, "Let yeah. me give you a lesson," yeah. and it was uh, it was a lesson for all of us. His humility for you know, I'm just here to to make golf better and to help people and to teach them. That's my gift and my treasure to this world, and he was so willing to share it. And he will definitely be missed. But what a treasure! For myself to get him to know him on a small personal level and to have had him here at the show you know it really uh, was a special treat well that man was rory no not rory yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you know you, carolyn's right the the headliner memories are always good because that first you know, the first year is always special the show and we had hank caney who at that time was marco mirror's teacher and i was able through mission golfer to have a relationship with aldo la shaft company and i was able to call aldo la shaft company and get hank caney to the show that gave us a great uh, credibility but I still remember I did a press release and I said that we'd also have Big Cat Williams at the show and I've said this several times but I still like it is the fact that in my press release I said that he would be driving a golf ball through a phone book that's what I thought I put down but I had a daisy wheel printer back then <laughs> not real crisp on those last letters and book turned into booth and people said in the paper it said he's going to be driving a golf ball through a phone booth <laughs> you know it's like superman what is it and actually a tv station channel three case zzm tv or whatnot they came to the show because they thought he was going to be driving a ball through a phone booth hey sometimes th good things happen with typos with publicity <laughs> well you, you you should have got a fake booth then. that's right i should have i wish i would have yeah so that's that's I think that was a good one because even even uh, Big Cat says hey I can do a book and he did drive a ball through a phone book yeah. and it wasn't from Borculo it was Grand Rapids phone book right yeah <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't from Manhattan right yeah it was just Grand Rapids pages. but he drove that thing right through and I said okay now get the booth over here and see what he so anyways that was that was a good one we had a good time with that but it's been a great run it's been nice to have Carolyn. Uh, have me around with the show at uh, Show Span because they do this weekend. They got another show next week. Yeah. You know, I did this show and then fell apart for about two weeks, and then started doing Michigan Golfer. But these guys got to get right up, and they got the boat show next week, and it keeps on going. They 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 really know how to handle these. Okay, Carolyn. Now. Another opening, another show. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So, and it was a thrill to have it open last year, the, last night when we opened. You know, that Friday night, it's a treat. And uh, I, I, Terry and I were standing at the entrance together, joking. I said, for four minutes, I'm just going to stand here. I'm not going to do any work. And a couple of my employees said, I think you've earned that. I think you can stand there for four minutes and just enjoy the bagpipers, enjoy everybody, just the energy as things get going. And so yeah, another year, 25 years, and you know, more, bigger and better every year we try to make it. We're already about four ideas into next year, so uh, I appreciate everybody's input. And uh, you know, sometimes we, well it continues to be that we should close a half an hour early because <laughs> <laughs> we still get those every time, you know, about 10% yeah. of our exhibitor surveys, but that's okay, that's all right. We do appreciate that they care and they want to share their ideas. and. You know, we get a lot of great ideas. So, well, Carolyn Alt and Showspan have put on a terrific show here.